Hi, I'm Asto, and welcome to Astonished Animations. One of the things that I hope to do every day is visiting a cafe around sunset, enjoying my afternoon tea, surrounded by the nice cafe ambience, jazz music playing in the background, light from the sunset streaming through the window, truly relaxing. Having coffee around this time might not be a good idea, so I'll be having a tapioca milk tea instead, which should contain less caffeine. Sadly, I don't really have a chance to chill in a cafe these days, so I'll just put this piece of imagination in the gallery inside my mind. A cafe in a frame. This scene is created fully in Blender, except for the textures I use both Blender and Procreate to paint them. And today, I will be showing you the principle to create the scene in a frame effect. The idea of this effect is to use a box. And if you get it, that is the end of the tutorial. But yes, the main idea is to create a container that surrounds a scene. Let's try to make this together. First, create a container with a window. You can use any form of mesh, like a cube, a sphere, or even a, a Suzanne. <clears throat> In edit mode, duplicate the container and scale it down a bit. This duplicate will now be the walls of our scene, the inner walls. Line up the inner and outer windows and connect the gap between the inner walls and the outer container. Create two new materials. I'll rename the first one to container and the second one to inner walls. Select all the interfaces in edit mode and assign them to a new vertex group. While having those inner walls selected, assign the inner walls material to them. If your scene in the container is an outdoor scene, consider changing shadow mode to none for both of these materials. That way you can use a sun without the mesh blocking it. Change the container material to an emission shader. Choose the color. Maybe do the same for the inner walls. Back to the container material. Hover your mouse over the color field and press Ctrl C to copy the color. Go to World Properties, hover your mouse over the background color and hit Ctrl V to paste the color. When the container and the background have the same color, we can now see that the scene in a frame effect is kinda working. The container will probably block our view when we are working on the scene inside. To avoid that, add a mask modifier and select the vertex group that we have created earlier. Turn the monitor button on and off to hide or show the outer faces and make sure that the camera icon is always turned off so the mask modifier will not be applied in your render. Now you may notice that the background color is affecting the lighting of our object, but we want to be able to change the background color to whatever we want. To achieve that, we want to separate the visible background and the background light that will be reflected by other objects. Switch to the shading workspace and before we touch any notes, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, search for Node Wrangler, and enable it. Close the preferences window and here at the bottom shader editor, duplicate the background node. Hold Ctrl Shift and hold right click on the upper background node. Drag that line onto the second background node, release the mouse button and a mix shader will appear. If the factor of the mix is zero, the mix shader outputs the upper node. If the factor is one, it outputs the lower node completely. Hit Shift A, Input, Light Path, and we want this is Camera Ray property to control the mix factor. To make this very simple, when is Camera Ray equals one more true, it is kind of related to something we can see directly, like the visible background. If it is zero or false, it means the opposite. It's related to something we cannot see directly, like the background light reflected by other objects. I'm probably doing a really bad job explaining this, so I suggest checking out the documentations. So now plug its camera ray into the mix factor. 
Now the upper background node represents our environment light, which will be reflected by our objects. And the lower background node is the visible background, which should have the same color as the container. If you are lazy like me, you can use drivers to control the background color using the container's color. Click on the container's color, change to RGB, and now we have red, green, blue, and alpha values. Right click onto any of these fields and select copy data path. Go back to the background shader and click on the lower notes color, right click on the R value and add a driver. For the driver type, select average value, select single property, change the property type to material, select our container material, and now hover your mouse over the path and hit Ctrl V. This driver should not be working yet because the path that we copied contains all R, G, B, and A values. And we only want the red in this case. So add square brackets 0 to the end of the path, which represents red. With this driver working properly, right click on the background's R field and hit copy driver. Then paste this driver onto G, B, and A. Make sure that the background node itself is selected, right click on any of these RGBA fields in the color and open drivers editor. Change the last number in the brackets for green to 1, blue to 2, and alpha to 3. Right now, we can change the container color and the background color will change as well. At this point, the foundation of the effect is complete. All you need to do right now is to add objects into the container. You can create portals, or even a monitor like this. Thank you so much for watching the first video of Astonished Animations. In this channel, I will be sharing what I love and what I know. The reason why I start out with this cafe in a frame scene is that I hope that this channel will be like this cafe, a place to relax, a place to let go of our stress and have fun. Astonished. It's the name of the cafe. I'll see you next time.